This podcast contains an English accent that most of our Irish listeners will find offensive. Also, there may be some colourful language that you're going to find less offensive. Now, over to Ryan and Leon. Enjoy the podcast. So most extraordinary, the sources for your songs, I mean, Wuthering Heights, what other sources have you used? Um, well, that, that's the only, the only book that mm. I've actually written about. Most of uh, my other inspiration comes from people. Uh, people are full of poetry, you know, everything they say, maybe the way they say it has a, a magic and a spark in it, and uh, people are always saying things that inspire me. I mean, people are just full of wonderful things, it's, mm. it's great. I could listen to Kate Bush all day, to be honest, with that voice. Amazing voice. Yeah. Do you want to, do you ever Don't hear? Don't just all in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Uncanny. <laughs> Uncanny. Like, it was like, you just took the vision of Kate Bush. Yeah. And just that was, that it. was, she's here. Have you ever seen Noel Field and dancing to Kate Bush's Water and Heights dressed as Kate Bush? No. Is this in the, the sitcom he did? No, My Bush is, stuff. He did this like chill. I think it was like Live Aid or something. It wasn't Live Aid, but it was like something along the line. Sports Aid, I think it is. Oh, yeah, okay. And he dressed up as Kate Bush and performed to Other Nights. Yeah. Worth, worth a look, is it? It's beautiful. It's magical. Any of our listeners, do that now. Pause this podcast, listen to it, come back. No fielding, you Kate Bush. Fun. Or just, you know, Ryan just gives another rendition, maybe. And we'll, you know. I just think so. It's not like I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> nice Uncanny. Bush. it's like Kate Bush in the room I got <laughs> fucking goosebumps on the arms oh, but that was Kate Bush talking about we are talking to, to Gay Byrne actually mm. on uh, Irish television back in 1978 and it was one of her first ever uh, TV performances definitely the first in Ireland anyway talking about the uh, poetry of people mm. and there's a reason well we started with that because today we're, we're in artificial intelligence world we're in the black um, mirror. We're in AI. Funny thing as well, another fun fact, because, you know, I, my brain tends to retain these random facts. Yeah. Gay Bourne, obviously, the the presenter of the Late Late Show. Late Late Show is the longest running chat show ever in the world. Is it? Yeah, longest ever. There you go. Wow. Random nugget of information. We could probably make an AI Gay Bourne. <laughs> we, we could. We could. Okay, then. Well done. <laughs> He's not great early on anyway. Ah, okay, but, but uh, he I introduced can't, condoms can't. to the Irish people. Did he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. What do you mean? Another thing on the YouTube. Just add, 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 was he, just like a fa- the face did of... Did a demonstration? On, the, on the show. The they were illegal show. till 1994 in Ireland. This place. Do you know what they, <laughs> Sometimes they said, this place. Football teams used to go over to England, right, in the 90s. Yeah. Because, it was 1992 they were made legal. Something like that. It was basically, they made legal divorce and condoms in like the fr- same year. Because obviously that makes sense. Yeah. But, um, Perfect combo. What they used to do was... Left hook, right hook. They, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People wouldn't be having like millions of children with random strangers. No. The football teams, Irish football teams used to go over, obviously you know, like England and across the north and all like that and whatever. And they used to carry in their sports bags back. They used to smuggle over curly whirlies because you couldn't get them. Yeah. And condoms. Wow. Because you weren't allowed Because the Catholic Church Wouldn't let you Because it was against God God would cry Every time you wore a condom For fuck's sake Yeah Little rubber tears <laughs> <laughs> Latex tears sorry. Ga- That ga- sounds like a fucking song <laughs> Latex tears Latex tears My new album By B- Billie Eilish By Billie Eilish <laughs> <laughs> Latex tears I do actually Just go Late late show I do think It's, uh, it's perfect Actually mm. the show itself Because like It's Not just woofing celebrities selling stuff it's it's real as well like it's, it's lovely actually they have like when they get the audience and ask some questions and they have normal people on I just think it's got a really nice balance of like showbiz but also like the the, the reality of like just normal people as well Leon, I've always loved it Leon's factoid number three of this podcast yeah the Late Late Show is different than most to chat shows because if you notice the house lights are up on the audience the reason why the house oh. lights are up on the audience and not in other places where they dim the house lights is because they don't want the audience to be involved. But in Ireland, everyone seems they want their opinion matters the same as everyone else's. They all have. You go into any place in Ireland, everyone has a fucking opinion about something, even if they have no idea about that at all. Yeah. So they keep the house lights up because they want to keep the audience engaged 
and it's kind of like like they're going for a town hall kind of vibe a parish hall where anyone can put their hand up and ask a question so it's brilliant and you get that vibe yeah there you go love that random fact Mm. well today we are talking about ai um we're also going to talk about electric picnic we're both going to be at ep next weekend we're just going to share a couple of posts that are also doing bits and pieces down there um that we are going to suggest you you know climb out of your sweaty tent yeah. and uh get to see um but i thought i'd start off the show by uh sharing um a a, a french style poem for you i was in paris at the olympics like last weekend I mentioned oh. it on the show last week and i did something quite cool went to uh, a bar or well, restaurant bar called Le Du Magot. Okay, so this place is where it's quite well known for like Hemingway would have like chatted to F. Scott Fitzgerald. Actually, I think it's the place where Fitzgerald shared the first draft of The Great Gatsby wow. to, to Hemingway. Oh. So I went there, got a friend to film me doing a Victor Hugo poem. Very Victor cool, Hugo, cool. the Hunchback of Notre Dame, Les Mis, he wrote those two. Loved, loved the poem as well. And I had all the intention to share that poem, um, The Grave Said to the Rose, on this show. But then, on my TikTok, a much more uh, charismatic Frenchman popped, on, popped onto me TikTok, the raconteur and comedian Marcel Lucan. Ooh, so never heard of him. Marcel Lucan um, and the poem Wine in a Can. So this is, instead of Victor Hugo, probably one of the most decorated French writers of all time, this is uh, Marcel Lucan at the comedy store with wine in a can. This is wine in a can. (laughs) Wine in a can. Wine in a can. There are some things in life I just can't understand. Is society really so far down the pan that we're actually fine with some wine in a can? Wine in a can, wine in a can. As the vineyard grape completes its noble lifespan to be lovingly picked by a sure steady hand. Then fucked into a tin <laughs> to be wine in a can. Can you truly say your life has gone to plan as you swig like a pig drinking wine from a can? As our history books chart the fall of man, they read Nixon, then Johnson, then wine in a can. <laughs> Fruit on a pizza, sandals with socks. I thought we'd hit bottom with wine in a box. But to add to the list of a cultural ban, just above Nazi banners, should be wine in a can. Sure, this is a free country, unlike Afghanistan. You can drive to a car park to make love in a van. But if that is your choosing, after afternoon cruising, while your partner is snoozing, and your thoughts turn to boozing, and you're musing upon it, wiping sperm from your bonnet. (laughs) Voyeurs give you a handshake for avoiding the handbrake. When between them, they drop three pounds ten in your hand. Don't degrade yourself by buying wine in a can. That was Wine in a Can by Marcel Lucon. Marcel Lucon. Marcel Lucon. Do you like that? Fun fact for all our listeners going to festivals. My dad gave me this tip. Mm. If you get wine in a box, bring it with you because they let you bring it in. Drink all your wine, blow the bag up, you have a pillow. Oh, that's that's pro. That's top tier tip that. Do you know you won't make a good pillow? Wine in the gown. 
<laughs> we'll ask you for some festival tips later on because I've not, not been to EP yet. So um, mm, yeah. I know you've been a few times, haven't you? So we're going nice. to give us a few few tip bits for the listeners who are going to be sweating it out in the, hopefully not the pouring rain. Comfortable shoes. Oh, you do yeah. a lot of walking. Mm. It's a big festival. Not compared to the likes of Glastonbury and stuff like that, but it's big for Ireland. Yeah. And you do walk loads. So I suggest comfortable shoes. I wear Crocs. Yeah. The, Cro- lep- the, the leopard print the leopard ones, print I think, yeah. you wore last year. Uh, Crocs for the morning, Docs for the evening. Nice. You can't wear Docs, can you? Oh, for the evening you can, it gets cold. Docs, fuck me. Docs, when you tell you, the all terrain vehicles. Docs and shorts. Docs and shorts. Well, you can wear Docs and whatever you want, the Docs and hot pants. <laughs> Oh, come on. It's for your shoe. If he, honestly, because the grass gets wet when you're in a field and it's that night time, condensation yeah, goes everywhere. Oh yeah, fair fuck, yeah. So if, the thing is... It's quite cold then. You don't get cold, but if you get damp, you get very cold. Mm, so okay. you want to stay dry. So waterproof jocks, crocs and docks. Possibly good quality socks. Oh, oh, excuse me! It just comes naturally. It just falls out of my mouth you, like You even got it or you eat. <laughs> speaking of... Uh, speaking of just... Absolute burst People. of creativity. AI. 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 AI, right. What does it so stand for? Artificial intelligence. Does it? Yeah. Cool. Well, when I was away, right, um, I had a friend who was showing me around Paris, and he treated AI like it was his personal consultant. That's how much AI is now fucking matching. Like, you know, yesterday, last week we mentioned the film Her. Yeah. Like, you can talk to this thing now, and it will talk back to you. I don't, and I don't really get it why you would embrace AI. I can't see any value in it, to be honest. Do you know what we can do? I first encountered ChatGPT. Chat G- I first Chat G- G- P- T. ChatGPT. I'm going to finish that. <laughs> I first encountered ChatGPT. Yeah. I got Perfect. it. I got it. Amazing. For the first time this evening. And yeah, I you've asked, never even used it? Never used it before. Trying to stay off it. Trust yeah. have it, but I used it. I indulged, and it didn't realize that it can create images. Oh man, it could do anything. And I used it to create a masterpiece. I used it to depict an ostrich fighting a pumpkin in the style of Dutch realism. And what we can do is, we can post that picture. Oh yeah, that for get our posted. listeners to see. It's it's just not believable. Yeah, it's just not. But like how. It, it would have to know what Dutch realism is and have like what pre made drawings of, of cartoon ostriches and like where? Where does it come from? It's fucking. Are you scared about this? I think. Does it it's, make you nervous? I remember I, I've listened to a lot of podcasts about it and it's not AI that scares me, it's what humans use AI for. Hmm. So it's not like. AI itself won't destroy us or fix us or whatever. It'll be humans guiding the AI. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, say for instance, I used it to create a masterpiece of Dutch realism there, where I could have asked it to. I don't know. I suppose it has guidelines and stuff like that. But what are AI? Yeah. Well, it wouldn't let me use. I originally wanted to have Jesus fighting Santa Claus, but it wouldn't. Copyright let me. infringement. Copyright infringement. Probably. I don't know. Disney will come ask me. Or yeah. Something. Who? Who? Who's in charge of copyright law? Santa. Do you know what I mean? Coca Cola. Yeah, maybe. Coca Cola trucks will come looking for their mirrors, whether their images back. I'm not sure. I don't know. Has anyone ever written you an AI poem? Yes. Yeah, that, same. I think it's really common that people are using uh, AI for poetry. My cousin actually, um, for my birthday, said, because he'd be into kind of technology and stuff like that, and said to me, I've written, I don't know how to write a spoken word piece, mm. so I wrote you a spoken word piece with AI. With AI. And poetry will work because poetry is very structured. Spoken word is a bit like jazz, so it doesn't really get spoken word as much. Mm. You so, mean like the, the verses rhyme? Is that what you mean when we say it works? It's very formulaic. Yeah, so like sure. you can depict, so with, obviously you know it's spoken word, you kind of, you're, it's like rap. You're playing tricks on people where you don't want them to kind of guess Obviously, you want everything to rhyme, mm. but you don't want the next person to be sitting there going, "Oh, that's the that's the swing word there. They're going to rhyme it." If I'm talking about table, it's going to be able and be stable. Like you know, you don't want someone to be, de- you know, predicting what you're actually going to say next or yeah. what the vowels are going to sound like. You're kind of playing tricks, so it's a bit like jazz where you can kind of you're swinging in and out of things, 
and trying to keep people engaged by stopping and then starting again you know messing with that yeah, whereas AI tempo. doesn't have that it's very formulaic as I said so there's a rhyming scheme there's a rhyming meter there's it uses different kinds of so like you know it's it can get poetry but it can't get spoken word just yet yeah well g- good surely that's a good thing no we'll still have a job for a while yeah well, it's just bad poetry now like it, it can yeah. rhyme and it has obviously the 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 backlog of every word ever written so you know it, it can use rhyming schemes better than probably we can quicker yeah. but i don't think that means it's good i think it's i think it's a really bad thing for humanity for ai to say yes to writing poems and yeah. bless people like i do appreciate that like people want to share art and they don't feel comfortable so like when someone says oh, i'll write your poem oh it's 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 ai you know you're kind of going thank you ish <laughs> well you think about it this way you know, it's like, like me saying ryan i've made you a lovely cabinet but i use the drill or i Ike, no I Ike, ikea flat pack surely that's the You'll still appreciate the fucking cabinet. I would appreciate it. No, yeah, sure. I spent time on that cabinet with my little Allen keys. Mm. So, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. But the craft of building it, you're still doing. But like it's the like, craft of creating a poem, you're not really doing. It's like you, you get somebody AI. who's never written a poem before and get them to read poetry for dummies. And then they follow, for like, you know, follow the, fo- like the formula and the recipe to make a poem. But they don't have the intuition on writing a poem. Like, say, for instance, some of... From my own terms, for some like my best pieces, I have no idea where the fuck it came from, and I've no, I've never sat down and right, I'm going to write a poem with this structure. I'm going to use this kind of rhyming scheme. Mm. It just kind of falls out of you, and I'm sure it's the same with yourself. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's, it's lightning in, moments, and it's intuitive. And AI doesn't have intuition on how to write a poem. It'll just follow the rules. Yeah. So that's why it kind of lacks a little bit in it, but it's still terribly fun to use. Well, should we test it? We should test it. I think let's test it. So what what we're going to do? Um, I've said to you, we'll, we'll we'll take a poem yeah. that we have both wrote, yeah. and we're gonna like tell AI where, where our heads were when we before we wrote the poem, and let's just see what it what it comes back with. Give it our their mindsets and what we're gonna what vision we had for our poem before. Yeah, yeah Grant. So I'll, I'll go. So like, I'll um I'll, I'll I'll do this one right, and this is a poem um called on days when there is fuck all on. Surely AI can't come up with a title like that first of all what a banger what a banger banger. what a fucking banger and it's a poem about um how uh having like you know days where or weekends where you've not really got much on and you feel like your life's a bit small um you know it can be quite an isolating and quite depressing experience but it's also got a twist which is like you know it, it won't last and you know there's light at the end of the tunnel so it's a poem about hope it's a poem about hope so this is um, on days when there is fuck all on. On days when there is fuck all on. Still get dressed. I know you're stressed. That those planning days may be long gone. On days when there is fuck all on. And time that once was free is locked. In dreams where other people flock to frolic in your fun. On days... When there is fuck all on. You flick through friends of times gone by. And how you made your exes cry. Do they too have plans equal to none? On days. When there is fuck all on. Spray a scent. Do your hair. Who cares that no one's there to stare. Life rebirths at the rise of the sun. You'll be okay. Ease your eyes before the day is done. On days when there is fuck all on. That was On Days When There's Fuck All On by Dugsy Malone. Thank you very much, brother. So this is what Ryan actually asked Chat GPT. And this it's it right there. The problem is it's it's good what it came up with. It's really good. So there's not much to say. <laughs> So I'm reading this for the first time, so yeah. this is your question. Yeah. Hey, chat. I'm trying to write a poem about what it's like when you don't have plans, but you're trying to stay positive that you will have plans in your future. So I need a poem that is a little bit sad, but also has a positive message. Can you write one? It's a very, it's quite specific, and it's trying to give chat the, the kind of guideline, the blueprint of an up and down story. So we've given it. We've given it the start. 
that's a good that's a good thing to, so it's it's obviously probably wrote this in about four milliseconds sorry it was, it was done within a within a flick Jesus it's, uh, it's too many Americanos so it says very politely of course <laughs> here's of course. a poem that reflects both the sadness of not having plans and the hope for a brighter future so this is AI with AI's version of on days when there is fuck all on the day is long the hours are slow with time to think and time to grow no plans to guide my restless mind yet hope within i strive to find the quiet home of empty space can often feel like life's embrace though moments pass without a trace i search for dreams that i can chase the world spins on its busy way will i await my turn to play in stillness seeds of future sown in time their beauty will be shown for every pause a chance to see the endless possibilities that life's a journey yet to chart with room for passion room for heart i may not have a path set clear but faith in better days is near with open eyes and open soul i'll find my way i'll reach my goal the empty hours the silent nights will one day bloom with vibrant lights for in this time i learn to grow preparing for the dreams i'll know so though today feels still and bare i'll nurture hope with tender care for plans will come the future bright and in that glow i'll find my light that was the AI version of On Days When There Is Fuck All On. It left a little message for us as well. I hope this captures the balance of your feelings <laughs> and conveys the hopeful message you're aiming Fuck for. Fuck you, AI. You little prick. Fuck off. Because the, the annoying thing is, like you said, like they've, they've got the... They, they know the rules of the game. So they've got all the words and they know the rules and they're able to follow a, a journey. Like, because that was a bit of a... It was not. It was moving. We have to say that it's a moving poem. It supposedly it's very good at taking information in and replicating it. It's like variant of it, so not creating new information, but replicating with a twist old information. Mm, yeah. But it can just remember so much information. It can blend it all together. But I suppose that's kind of all the information. I suppose <laughs> it's kind of like how humans write as well, because you need wor- real world experience. You take information in. And then you use your brain to kind of mix Repackage. it all together, put it back out again. Jesus. There's a little fucking psychology philosophical nugget. Philosophical. Philosophical nugget for yourself. You, you, you're back in AI, yeah. I think AI would be good. You, you, you're buzzing. I think AI should be in charge of like government and stuff. I think that humans well, are yeah. terrible at that. Because you have a lot of like corporate greed and you've got like politicians and stuff. So imagine like, imagine like it was in charge of like... So it's not communism. It's not. This. No, no. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's not going to be a dictator. Are you sure? It's not a dictator. It's like imagine right. It's North Korea. <laughs> no, right. You know, like the civil service, the way they've got like departments, and departments of like say like roads, like managing the roads. Yeah. Right. And you've got an allocation of resources. So say for instance, you give a uh, no. I'm sorry, anybody who works in the roads department in the civil service, but you might be out of a job if it was up to me. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> imagine you had a budget of like 2 billion euro, possibly more. I don't know how much they fucking get for the roads. Say 10 billion euro a year yeah. to spend. That's a lot of road work do, being done, right? <laughs> and you need to allocate that around the entire country. Yeah. You have to, you think about that, right? The civil service have a division that will set up a, a committee that will set up a fucking commission, an investigation, they look at statistics, and then the, how many people will be paid just to pay the people to get the fucking, the logistics of it? You ask AI, you have two billion, here's all the roads, use Google Maps, fix all the roads, there you go. They'll probably do it in about 10 seconds. Yeah, f- okay. That's yeah, what I'm saying. F- okay, I'm not fair. saying like, should it go to war with Russia? I'm saying like fix the fucking <laughs> fix the fucking fix roads. The bumps. Fix you know the I mean? bumps. Like I'm excited for the future of like uh, AI in healthcare. But like yeah. I guess just like just the, it's the literature end of it and the replacing of a human brain. Yeah. But like the actual uh, insight of a human that's that that was what scares me. But like the thing as well is so even the the cuz I think about this as well a lot. Like say 
you have jobs that are going to be replaced. So they say there's a, a high amount of jobs now going to be replaced by AI because it just does it better, right? But think about it this way. Back in the turn of the century, not obviously the millennium before that, you used to have lamp lighters. So if you walk down Talbot Street, all the old lamps, right? Yeah. There was a man and a group of men that used to light all the lamps, lamp lighters, mm-hmm. and put them all out. Yeah. Right? Then they invented light bulb. All those men weren't just put out of work and just fucking died of poverty. No. Where did they do? They got jobs in different areas. They probably got jobs. Be skilled. Putting life, like, you know, putting light bulbs in. So, like, it's not as if you're, there's not going to be any jobs for anybody. They'll just be very different jobs. You're probably yeah. be working with AI, you know. Yeah. Well, listen, the, the, yeah. The humans are always behind decisions. So, like, those people that say, like, oh, yeah, well, at some point, like, you, you'll just be AI. It's like, well, no. What humans make that decision? But I think <laughs> no one is making that call. I think you'll need creatives. Even to like, if AI starts making palms or whatever, you'll still need. It is. <laughs> okay. But like, say for instance, the picture I made, the masterpiece, the yeah. Dutch realism masterpiece, that didn't come up on its own. I had to direct it and ask it. But if someone who's not creative wouldn't have asked for something completely random, like a fucking pumpkin fighting an ostrich mm. in the style of Dutch realism, like that just, you know, it's a very. It's not your. You know, it's out there. It's a bit out there. But, it, you know, I think it'll take creatives to work with AI to create better art. Hmm. Because you'll see some people like graphic designers are using AI now to make their work slightly better. Are they? Yeah. So they'll they'll draw a picture or they'll come up with like a design and they'll literally just pull it to AI and go, polish that and it'll do it. And oh. it'll bring back a better version of what they've already created. Rather than going... It, tweak yeah. filters and... Yeah, because, okay. you know, if I, if you have someone with the graphic, mo- like a graphic no- knowledge, right, yeah, so yeah, say yeah. a graphic designer, they will know how to ask better questions and to direct the AI to do better than us. Because we don't have, unless you have a fucking graphic de- design no. degree under your sleep. I don't no. know. I wouldn't know, but you're, you're a man of many talents. I do have a few things up my sleep, but not a graphic design <laughs> degree. Yet. So Yet. far. But like, you know, you'll get a graphic designer probably ask better questions than we would, because it has more of a, a, you know, it can articulate better things. Same as if we asked a poem from a chap GPT, it might be better than someone who's a layman who wouldn't have written any poems. That's my rant. Well, I think, I think, I think AI gave me a good run for my money. <laughs> you would ask it very nicely <laughs> um, let's do yours which which poem are we going to try and replicate with AI I could do an acapella rap well, yeah do what you want but how are you going to tell AI to do an acapella rap it's the theme of the rap ok go yeah. do you want to do that yeah well whatever whatever you want okay. as long as we can give AI the, the uh, as good a chance as you're getting I'm taking my chewing gum ok right so this rap actually isn't released at all it's about capitalism mm. and it's about people that are slaves to capitalism and would spend all their money rather than on essentials and bettering themselves they live for like social media oh, okay. and they like put like you know they've got like the turkey teeth mm. and they've got like fucking everything on you know wearing like designer clothes but can't pay their light bill so me I was kind of like a rant that I wanted to do yeah amazing in a rap and there's no beat behind it so we don't need to ask it to do, supply a beat but this is the rap I haven't even got it I haven't even got it uh, named but it's just a little rant about capitalism amazing right Too many people turn slaves to these brands. Big business brainwashing big business hands. Imperial trade routes carrying third world materials. The next best thing spreading faster than venereals. High street fashion. Now clashing with your bank account. You can't afford your rent but buy some new shoes before you drown. You bought your moth fake tits. And now our fillers have a like a clown. Your life's in bits. Pal you're one week from closing down the holes in your pockets. Larger than eye sockets. Spending whatever's trending and rising faster than rockets. Chin round your neck like a locker. Head full of fluff. Davy Crockett. The spell of sell, sell, sell. Works well especially. Especially on the youth, and I'm not talking out me whole, but now I'm speaking the truth. Take social media for an example. A sample of consumerism, amount of people pushing labels, give your brain an aneurysm. And then as children growing up, finding themselves cut up inside this prison market and company couldn't spend and light like light inside a prism's called diffraction. A regular spending habits on a macro scale is called abstraction. Pushing money away faster than a maths paper is called subtraction. The any use here heard of one corporation giving a fuck about a single nation, no. Then why'd you think I'd given up so much hope? 
On the daily grind, the nine to five, a bust and balls to stay alive. It's hard to say you're striving when your heart is focused on surviving. Get up, stand up, stand up for your rights. I said, now get up, stand up, don't give up the fight. Cause we need some change. The nice spark of flame to ignite the formulate a plan better than the usual malarkey by something that makes sense. The better hierarchy to capture the minds, the rebellious and the hearts of romantics by someone smarter than me. Sure, I'm just only nomantics spitting fire out me mouth, spout corrupt corrupt the antics and consumerist addicts with their poor spending habits infecting the minds of the youth and filling their heads full of maggots for a world so woke we're focused on the wrong things distracted by some bullshit in the pursuit of shiny little things who needs healthcare when you can afford some new shiny rings think about that model for a second and the happiness it brings that was an untitled acapella rap by Leon Dunn about consumerism and capitalism and people buying superficial things what do you think uh, you know what I, I loved it and it's funny because we, we think it's new because uh, you're talking about like, turkey teeth earlier on but like I remember back in the day like you know the catalogue would have been a big deal and people are buying t- well the, the turkey teeth of now was the HD TV of the early 2000s like people have always spent beyond their means to make sure they're looking pretty flash it's funny sad saying. like yeah. but yeah it was class man and it, it hammered home like the just what people are up to now and like you know not having enough cop on to understand yeah. the, the kind of zombie nature of it was like that you ever see um the, the zombie film dawn of the dead where like zombies are just stuck in the mall yeah and they can't get out oh, same yeah. now isn't it like just <laughs> fucking people just it, it, to, yeah just it's fillers better. and fucking going to you know i don't know barley and fucking taking photos like even like influencers right hiring private jets to sit and take pictures but not fly them around it's too expensive is that happening they get in private jets take pictures and be like live your life success you know get the watch in you know flying high with the rest of them or above the shoulders of whatever bollocks I'm talking about because then they put it up on Instagram people think jeez that's what he needs to do he's got a fucking jet doesn't no never been in a jet (laughs) flies Ryanair flights Oscar Wilde does Stop bringing up <laughs> this Oscar Wilde in a fucking airplane. <laughs> You're killing me. So this is incredible what chat has come back with, right? So let's 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 see if we can summarise what your thought process and give chat a chance. So we've gone, hi chat. Can you write me a rap that has a theme based around people spending all their money on superficial items when they cannot even afford the basics? That is I think that's a good setup. I can't it? wait. I cannot wait to hear. So, sure. Here's a rap that captures the theme of people spending money on superficial items while struggling to afford the basics. So, it's on the money. It's telling you, Leon, this is on the money. So, this is a, a rap by Chat GPT. They got designer shoes, but the rent's past due. Flexing on the gram, but they can't buy food. Chasing every trend. Dripping in the name brands, but the fridge looking empty. Can't feed the fam, man. Paychecks gone in a flash, quick like a spark. Lights getting cut, now they're living in the dark. Credit cards maxed just to keep up the show, but deep down they know they ain't got the dough. Bought a new chain, but the bills stack higher. Trying to look fresh while their bank account's tired. New phone in hand, but the service is cut. No heat in the crib, man. They're stuck in a rut. Waking up stressed, trying to hustle for the next check. But every cent they make gets spent on the flex. Got the latest drip, but their life's on pause. Can't invest in the future when they're stuck in the floors. Weighed down by the pressure, got to keep up the act. But the truth's in the mirror. It's a hard, cold fact. Can't buy self-worth with the gold or the flash. Need to invest in yourself, not just burn through the cash. So... Take a step back. Reevaluate the grind. Don't let the shine blind you. Keep the basics in mind. It's not about the labels or the brand new ride. It's about staying true. Keeping dignity alive. That was a rap written by ChatGPT. I'm just... I, I... Gave a little... It gives a little fucking background to the to the inspiration go on this rap highlights the contrast between the pursuit of superficial wealth and the neglect of essential needs urging a shift in focus towards what truly matters it's mixing like dialect between like 
grime different cultures and rap and rap yeah. it's saying the crib and the chain so it's like it's scanned it's scanned like what all fucking the last hundred written cent and storms yeah even. it's just mashed it together to use it's just basically it's like someone googled rap words yeah but it's almost yeah. like someone's created like the the like an AI robot of 10 different rap artists and just mishmash them together yeah are you blown away Spooky. I'm fucking spooked man I think the way it's able to get what I was saying the technique isn't isn't very isn't great like say it's not stitching it's not the rhyming scheme is very again formulaic um, but I think the way I can tell it to do something and the way it can just like that respond so quickly mm. it, it knows what you're asking in it, like with a couple of lines, you yeah. get the meaning of There's what no you There's no tricks. Saying. Like it can't, it can't play games with words, and it can't pick out references that are quite abstract. But it, it, it is very good at creating sentences that rhyme that make sense. Yeah. Well, it's it's. <laughs> you know I mean, yeah, like it's, it's able to take a whole theme and just go with it, and just fucking have it like you know very very quickly so like it's the speed that's amazing as well that like, it did that in yeah what three, two seconds two seconds and the whole thing so that was yeah our featured poet artificial intelligence yeah you might see it on the word stage next year EP, <laughs> if it gets legs <laughs> well you never know listen it might already be on the fucking word stage knowing some of them heads you know oh I've said oh, it I've said it oh. put your phone away you lads fucking cancelled you will yeah listen I'm here to fucking tell, speak the truth it's just, it's just fucking, you're laying it down here. Just I laying am, it down. Yeah. Put the phone away. Take lads. all you bastards with me. Exactly. Um, speaking of the word stage, we're, we're both going to be um, performing poetry at the word stage. Back to back. Yeah, back to back. Uh, on the Saturday, um, and thank fuck in the early afternoon, because you know, you want to get out ready for Kylie Minogue and. You want to have your dancing shoes. Teddy on. Swims. What yeah. what are you look forward to seeing actually music wise Kylie Minogue can I say Kylie Teddy Swims Scratch Scratch Kneecap Wolf Tones Wolf Kneecap Tones, yeah um, Calvin Harris not really on Cal- the I'll go because you want you know you were born in the eighties yeah I, I wasn't, wasn't but I would I like I like that song though yeah it's a good song um there's loads of there's loads of bands and I love about like EP it's so big that you'll find so many acts that you've never seen before yeah like we were in Cree last year where Body and Soul used to be. And there's that lovely kind of natural amphitheatre where there's a dip in the ground like a hill. Mm. And we were like just walking along. I thought, oh, fuck, we'll just sit here because it's comfortable. Like, you know, you're sitting on a grassy hill. Like. And there's an old lad just gets up on the stage just starts singing this gorgeous music in Irish. Beautiful. Hadn't a clue who he was. And he's just fucking singing Irish. Deadly. Unreal. You know, sitting, with John Cummins, sitting with John Cummins from Shackalack and I was like, this is unreal. Yeah. Do you know? And there's like so many different areas as well. Like, and there's all different music to suit different people. There's, I've never been to the comedy tent. So I'm trying to go to the comedy tent this year just to see at least one act. Arlo Hannan's plan. You see? Yeah, Brins. Father Dougal from the, Father uh, Dougal. Dylan Moran as well, I think, is going to be there. Chain smoking, I'm sure. Yeah, I actually like Dylan Moran. He's, uh, his comedy's great. He he kept smoking even when the smoking ban was on. <laughs> and he's like, kid. fuck it, he's paid money for me to be... I'm going to smoke while I'm on the fucking stage. <laughs> Yeah, actually, actually, I remember being like a young teenager and having his like like DVDs. So I had a copy of Monster, yeah, his the live live stage show, like maybe in the early two thousand, and I watched it all the time. I mean, you're younger, you can't stop watching the, the same DVD. Yeah. <laughs> Watch it over and over again. It's like I had Billy Connolly on tape, yeah, and I used to just listen to it over and over. Again. I was like nine, shouldn't have listened to it. No, found no. it in my nanny's house. Just started listening to it. I didn't know what any of it meant, but that was great because he had yeah. a Scottish accent. But Dylan Moran's great in black books and all like that. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try and get to him. Um, but yeah, there's loads of uh, great poetry um, that will be at the word stage, organised and curated by David Hines, friend of the show, friend of ours as well. Spent a lot of effort and time curating just a perfect th- uh, three-day schedule with basically some of the... Or, or, all of the, the the best poets really in, in Ireland are going to yeah. be doing bits there. Mm. And we've, we've picked out just two... Um, to share, uh, I wanted to share a poem from um, a thing, the Fingal Poetry Slam champion. Is it the current champion, Jared? Fingal. Fingal Jared yeah. was Sorry. last year. Yeah, he went up against Anna D. Yes. So, yeah, that was last year. Yeah, so uh, Jared Devine. Jared Devine. Fireman and a poet. Absolutely. Give yeah. us all, give us a fucking chance, Jared. Gee, yeah. a fireman and a poet. Big fucking, Picking up all the birds. Big lad like you. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, massive big as well, and lad. handsome. Fuck off. <laughs> so he'll save you from a burning building on his daily basis. Yeah, 
ridiculous. <laughs> Give us a chance. He actually has a poem um, called The Fireman, I think. I think he was commissioned by someone to do that. Was he? So it was the rap yeah, for our, it was the anniversary of I could be pulling this in my arse, but I think it's for the Irish. I think you're right, day. but it's not. It's not the poem I was going to share. Uh, I want to share a poem. It's been a while since we've we've shared a like a an uplifting poem. You know, like when we started recording, we did like that the Stephen Maguire poem, uh, and then Dara Fleming, and then Charles Bukowski. So this is like in the same kind of ilk. So um, this is a poem by um, Joe Devine, and it's called "Don't Wait." Walk the parks. Tour the coast, taste salt from the sea, pause a while on mountain top, absorb the scenery, be mesmerised by woodland trails that weave through native trees, be hypnotised by turbines for whom life is a breeze, travel in good company, or with your thoughts alone, find the inner strength that waits beyond your comfort zone. Reward yourself with poison, be it sugared tea or stout. Toast victory, you've earned it, when ambition conquers doubt. So while you're still well able, get out and strut your stuff. Explore your own potential. You'll be dead for long enough. That was Jerry Devine, Don't Wait. Don't fucking wait. Don't fucking wait, pal. Do it now. Do you know what I mean? You can't do nothing from the grave. Yeah. Nothing. So you might as well grab life by the bollocks and swing it around like a bleeding carousel. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> so no, you didn't say that with a... Uh, no, I agree. You know, I'm with sure. you. I'm with you. Joe's going to be um, part of uh, the 1 to 2 p.m. slot at the Minefield stage along with Sheila Ryder, Jan Britton and... Your lovely self. Me. Yeah. yeah. So I'll be there one o'clock till two o'clock doing palms and stuff. Mm. Should be good. So my artist. Yeah. It's from the Midlands, from your neck of the woods. Oh, I. From the How do you pronounce it? Where is he from? Smethwick. 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 Yeah. Smethwick. Smethwick. Between Wolverhampton and actually where I'm from in Birmingham. They're probably neighbours. So... This is, his name is uh, Stephen Camden, a.k.a. Polar Bear. Polar Bear. Polar Bear. I've heard a lot about him. I'm familiar with his work, you know. I'm so, excited about this. David Hines is actually a big fan. And Dave Hines told me that he was a massive influence um, for the likes of Paul Curran and David Balfe, for those who love Craig Doyle. Who are, they're all mates now. Craig Doyle loves him as well. So uh, he's going to be at the war stage. I'm very excited. I've actually never seen him perform live. So I'm looking very forward to seeing him. Mm. But this is a poem from his book called Everything All at Once by Stephen Camden, a.k.a. Polar Bear. And it's just a little kind of piece of a poem. Um, and it says, in the blurb, it says, Stephen Camden's poems speak to the kaleidoscope of teen experience and life at secondary school. Amazing. So this is a poem from it. All together, same place. Same walls, same space. Every emotion under the sun. Fate lost, victories won. It doesn't stop until the bell. Now it's heaven, now it's hell. Who knows? Not me. I just wrote what I can see. So what's it about? Here's my response. It's about everything, all, at, once. That was Stephen Camden, a.k.a. Polar Bear, with a poem from his collection, Everything All at Once. Highly recommend anyone to check out his spoken word pieces online. Well, we just watched one. His uh, piece, Jessica. What do you think? I loved it, yeah. It was great. Oh, the story of like being a child and then life quickly been through when you've got a kid and like the things you love have been reflected in your child it was amazing I can't yeah. wait to see him now actually and he's on what time is he on so he's on between uh, he's with the amusing crowd so between two and four I was checking with David Hines my consultant there and he said about quarter past three quarter so past three in the, the middle in the middle of the show he'd be on around so uh, Saturday 
Saturday. Saturday's a great Saturday. day. Yeah, great day. Good day for the poems. It is, yeah. Buzzing. So, yeah, as a reminder, uh, I'll be doing a few things at around probably 12.30, 12.40 at the, the word tent in minefield and then leon's gonna be around about one o'clock about one o'clock, one o'clock. just before then, jan britain yeah and joe divine Jared as well Brown, they're all in the same Jared set Brown. and then we've got um stephen camden on around half three yeah so lovely afternoon of poetry for you. four hours of solid poetry and come and say hello as well if you if you come in there and you know you know don't be shy yeah. is all i'm saying come and say hello give us your poems come give on. us your fucking poems tell us well, actually, we might record you because we're going to do a show, aren't we? We're going to record a few bits and pieces down there. Bits. Yeah, why not? A few gorilla poems. Poems I mean, about gorillas, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, well, whatever you got. It's not up to us. These are fucking you. poems. These are fucking poems. These are fucking poems. These are bumper them poems. <laughs> <laughs> Say nothing. Say nothing. <laughs> Say nothing. No, um, you get fired. <laughs> <laughs> so, no show on... Um, no, no show on Monday because we'll be recovering, but maybe a show... Um, the following week there'll be a following week and it'll be the episode yeah. from EP it'll be the EP episode it'll be the EP episode um, we've got a little message to wrap the show up by um, a new friend of the show thanks to uh, the voice of the podcast really that isn't me you uh, the lovely Lisa Downey who um, met Bonnie Tyler the Bonnie the Tyler the Bonnie Tyler and um, Bonnie Tyler had a little a little message for us before we hear the voice of 80s icon and new friend of the Poetry Zone podcast. She's a big fan. She bon- listens to day one. Bonnie ahead. Tyler. Um, Leon, thanks for your time. Always a pleasure never to child, my baby. Bonnie. You're listening to what? The Poetry... The Poetry's Dead podcast. Poetry Dead? The Poetry's Dead podcast. <laughs> You're listening to the Poetry Dead podcast. Yeah.